Good morning, morning, morning. Good morning. And welcome to Hastings Bible Fellowship. Yay. We are, yay. We are Hastings Bible Fellowship. We are your hosts and teachers. I'm Cookie. He's. I'm Harvey. Stokes. And you are you. And we're glad about it. We are in um, our study today. We're still in uh, 1 John 4. Yeah. Chapter 4. We are here to go, we, we, what we're doing is we're going through the scriptures to get an understanding of who God is, who we are in Him, and to judge, personally judge yourself, to see if I'm in agreement with God, if you were in agreement with God, all right? God is looking for a people, not a person, all right? The person he sent to give us access to himself obeyed God and all that he did, the Father. All right? So, and he gave, his obedience gave birth to a people who would agree with God. That would be the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? That would be the Lord Jesus Christ. So, if we don't know what God requires, how can we say we're doing the will of God? So that's what we want to find out in our scriptures and in our Bible study. That is the desire that Harvey and I have for these teachings. We want to know who is God mm -hmm. and what has he equipped his people with mm -hmm. to do his will mm -hmm. in the earth. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. All right, yeah. so Superman is going to pray to do... He's going to pray. Yeah. And then we're going to get into 1 John chapter 4. And we're going to hear what God has to say about Christ Jesus, the beginning and the end. There you go. Because that's where we are. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your grace, your mercy, your peace, and your anointing and your strength. For you are in us. You have redeemed us from the hand of the devil and you have caused us to have rest in you yes we rest from our labors we rest from our wicked ways and we trust in thee to continually minister your grace, peace, and mercy to all the people of faith. Lead and guide us into your truth today, for you are great, Lord God. Amen. Now, um, Mrs. Stokes. Um, at the end of uh, our last uh, service uh, here, Mrs. Stokes uh, made a statement that frankly rocked my world. I haven't been the same since she said it. And uh, I was going to ask her to say it again, but uh, I'm going to do something a little bit better than that. I'm going to ask producer to rewind the tape so you can see what it was she said that uh, was so powerful. It was in the area of believing the love of God. Okay, producer, roll the tape. Whoever, whoever, are you a whoever? I'm a whoever. I'm a whoever. Whoever confesses and acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God, God abides, abides in him, him and he in God. We have come to know by personal observation and experience. Uh-oh. Have you come to know by personal observation and experience? And have believed with deep consistent faith the love which God has for us God is love 
And the one who abides in love abides in God. And God abides continually in him. Oh, that is some deep scripture right there. My God. The reality, the reality here, saints, is that we are struggling because we don't believe. We don't believe the lie. If you must sit your little happy butt down somewhere and get the book of 1 John chapter 4 and read it. Just read it. Read it out loud so you can hear it because you got to renew your mind to this truth because if you don't renew your mind to this, that spirit of Antichrist that we've been talking about, he's going to slip in and tell you a lie or two or three to get you to walk away from the things of God. These are things that are bedrock to your faith, to your relationship with God, to your ability to hear and do what God tells you to do. Believing in the love of God that God has loved you with and is loving you with and has shed abroad in your heart is absolutely necessary if you're going to walk in a place in your life where you have confidence in what God has placed in you and to what he has called you to do and to be. Okay. Mrs. Stokes rocked my world yet again in the area of believing the love of God. And uh, what she asked us to do is to just read the fourth chapter of 1 John, which I'm going to be doing right now from the new King James Version. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the Spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming, and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this, we know the spirit of truth, and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. 
if we love one another, God abides in us. And his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? This commandment we have from him that he who loves God must love his brother also. That's the fourth chapter. Of first John. Of first John. Now I dare say. that if you're gonna keep refusing to believe the love of God, you're gonna be putting yourself in danger of not receiving eternal life. You know why? Read verse 17. In this union and fellowship with him, love is completed and perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Confidence in what? The day of judgment. When is the day of judgment? When Jesus Christ returns. Every human that has ever lived will be experiencing the day of judgment. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That's what Paul said. We might receive for the things done in our body, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And just in case you're wondering, the Lord God of hosts is all mighty. He is a consuming fire. You're gonna need confidence to stand before him, mm -hmm. whoever you are. Whether you're saved or whether you're unsaved, all will stand before him. And those that are saved According to the verses that we read, if you hold fast to what was taught in the beginning, we have that which was promised by God to the faithful, which is mm -hmm. eternal life. So God puts his Holy Spirit in us 
Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit, therefore, is love. Holy Spirit is therefore the anointing that leads us into the truth. Holy Spirit is God's earnest of the Spirit, the down payment that we are going to be graced with eternal life at the return of Christ. Say it a different way. Holy Spirit being God in us is the one that gives us confidence of salvation. He is the one that gives us love in our hearts. He is love in our hearts. And therefore, he is the one that perfects God's love in us. And therefore, because Holy Spirit is there, we have confidence in the day of judgment. The Spirit of God Bearing, spirit, bearing witness with our spirits that we are children of God and those that are children of God are those that are the beloved those that are the beloved are those that shall receive eternal life because since Holy Spirit is there we have eternal life now so since we have eternal life now we are going to receive God's consummation of eternal life, the glorified body, at the return of Christ. So if I were you, I would get involved with maintaining what you have heard from the beginning concerning Christ Jesus, the beginning and the end, because he is who we fellowship in and with. Because we fellowship with him and we fellowship in him. We are privileged to walk in the light. And we're privileged to have the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us from all sin. And we're going to have confidence in the day of judgment. Said a different way. The Apostle John wrote this letter because those that are the beloved reading the letter. are righteous, holy, grace with Holy Spirit, and they walk in the light. They have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Now you read your version of that in verse 17, right? I started. Yes. I want you to finish reading it. In this union and fellowship with him, love is completed and perfected, completed and perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him. To face God on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Love is completed. It's, a, it's done with. In other words, we, everything that had to be done is done because we're in him. Yeah. Okay? So what's the problem? Well, it's us. <laughs> we, we don't believe it. That's, that's the problem. That's what God is contending with. A people that have chosen him as their Lord and Savior but have difficulty believing the love, the love that we are loved with. Yeah. Now, I'm speaking as a, I understand why we have difficulty with it. But in light of of Jesus' death, burial, resurrection. We Amen. need to repent. We need to repent and believe the love of God. We need to repent and say, Father, I repent. I was wrong 
for not believing the love that you have for me. I'm straining at this. It is hard for me to grasp hold to this. But I'm going to believe you versus how I feel. Versus what I know about me. See, we think what we know about us is greater than who God is. The love of God is greater than how you feel about you. When God says he loves us with an everlasting love, we can't even fathom that because our love is based on, are you nice to me? Do you treat me well? That's how we love. That, God's, that's, and God's love is not it, like that. It's not like that. So when we hear the word love, we think about us. We bring it down to the human level, which is based on how do you treat me. God's love is based on I'm God. Mm -hmm. I'm eternal. I'm all powerful. I know everything about everything. And I have chosen to love you. Even while you are still a sinner, I love you. My gift to you through my son is not based on your goodness towards me or agreeing with me or following me. It's based on my love for you because I am the creator. That is a supernatural love. It is the love that is in every one of those that are the beloved of God. And it, therefore, mm -hmm. because that love is there, through Holy Spirit, you are going to have confidence before God at the judgment you are going to be filled with boldness at the judgment you will be able to say I am a child of God and Jesus Christ the beginning and the end is my advocate and propitiation and therefore, thank you, Lord God, for dispensing eternal life mm -hmm. on my life. That's confidence. That's comf That's an assurance. That means I, I believe in God's love for me. Even though I know I've been naughty. Even though I know I haven't crossed every T and dotted every I. I know all that. And guess what? God's not keeping record of that. He said he wouldn't. Yeah. He said he wouldn't. That's his promise. He said he wouldn't. So if he said he wouldn't, then he doesn't. Which gives me confidence that I am cleansed completely by the blood of Jesus, by the sacrifice of his, of his, of his life, for his descending into hell, Paying the price for all sin and for all time. And everyone who receives him as Savior, as Lord, as, as Messiah, gets the benefit of the work that he's done. Here's the thing that's the rub to all this. Everybody won't receive him. Because why? They've been naughty but they won't humble themselves and receive God's gift. Yeah. Think about the one thing you would love to have. I don't care how extravagant it is. Think about that thing. And then somebody gets it for you. And you refuse to open up your hand and receive that gift. And whether you know it or not, the inside of you has been calling out for fellowship, for fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. okay. And Jesus has made it available. 
And the only way for you to get that thing that your heart, I mean your heart, that broken, broken piece on the inside of you, only way to receive all of God's goodness is to receive the gift that Jesus has provided. Receive it. Don't beg for it. Don't borrow for it. Don't kill for it. Receive it. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord. Come live in me. All my broken pieces. I need you to put them back together again. Make me whole. Make me complete. Empower me to keep living. Because I don't even want to live anymore. Okay? This is where... This is where... Many of us, if not all of us, have been at one place, at one, at one space of time or another, crying out for help, insight, peace, belonging. And the Lord Jesus Christ is calling to men and women everywhere to confess and acknowledge the truth about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Verse 15 of 1 John 4 says, Whoever confesses and acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. You know what that means? To have God abide in you and to have you abide in God requires one thing acknowledging the truth mm -hmm. about who Jesus is. Jesus is not just a carpenter who lived some 2,000 years ago on the shores of Galilee. He is the Son of Almighty God. He is God in human form. He is the God-man. He lived on earth as God, as a human being. If you acknowledge and confess that, see, confession means acknowledging truth. This verse says, God abides in you, in you and God. And that happens through Holy Spirit. Said a different way, if you have Holy Spirit, you have God. Mm -hmm. If you have Holy Spirit, you have love. If you have Holy Spirit, you have anointing that guides you into the truth. If you have Holy Spirit, you have the Spirit of God bearing witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. And to be a child of God is to be born of God. And all of this as a result of what you say or acknowledge about Jesus Christ and mm -hmm. Nazareth. So when it says down here, whoever confesses and acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God, the Apostle John is in this letter making a distinction between those that believe in God and those that are connected to Antichrist. Mm -hmm. That's why he's writing the letter. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of sharing with you what is required to receive eternal life, which is what God promised to all of those who continue to confess and acknowledge that which is true about Christ. And when you do that, watch verse 16. We have come to know by personal observation and experience and have believed with deep, consistent faith the love which God has for us. Now, we have come to know. Hmm. Who's writing this? The Apostle John. This is John, yeah. right? John is letting us know that He's had some experience with God. Okay? He's had some experience with God. And he says here, We have come to know by personal observation and experience 
and have believed with deep, consistent communion, mm -hmm. faith, communion, fellowship. faith, fellowship. All those words mean the same thing. Loyalty. I hear his voice. I do Good what he sense. says. Okay? Yeah. Confidence in the love of God will put you on the front lines of obedience to the great commission which is to go ye into all the world and teach all nations it wasn't until we talk about mrs stokes and i decided to believe the love of God that we could ever get on worldwide social media and tell the world about the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't do something like this without believing the love of God. There's no way possible you could do this week after week after week after week right. because it takes Holy Spirit infused confidence and boldness to proclaim mm -hmm. the word of the truth of the gospel. But yet, that's what the Lord has commanded mm -hmm. his mighty army in the earth to do and this is the experience that John had because he says down here he has come to know by personal observation mm -hmm. and experience. The Apostle John had experience proclaiming the gospel during the first century and he ran upon a variety of different false teachers false prophets, antichrist, and satanic demonic forces that sought to deceive the beloved of God. And of course, the Apostle John did what all apostles do. They, without fear and with boldness through the Holy Spirit, put their foot down and write a letter saying, if you don't proclaim that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, you're Antichrist, you're not of God, you're a liar. That's this letter. So when he says down here, they have come to know by personal observation and experience and have believed with deep, consistent faith the love which God has to us, that's what he's talking about. The Apostle John, watch this, had boldness, he had confidence, and he was And the reason he had boldness, confidence, and he had no fear mm -hmm. because he believed the love of God. And so therefore, when he says in verse 16, uh, read this last sentence. In fact, you can read it. It's your translation. Verse 16. Verse 16, where it God says God is. is. God is love. Mm -hmm. And the one who abides dwells in love. Rests in love. Abides dwells. Rests in God. Mm -hmm. And God abides, rests, dwells continually in him. Go to the next verse. In this union and fellowship with him. See that union? 
love is completed and perfected. There you go. So God lives in us. We are in him. Mm -hmm. That union that we are dwelling in one another. God Almighty. Love is perfected and completed with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face, face him yeah. because as he is so are we in this world so if you don't have confidence and assurance and boldness now you can forget about it on the day of judgment yeah. that's going to be a terrible day when all humanity is going to stand before the creator of heaven and earth and they're going to be asked by Yahweh God why should I give you eternal life and then he's going to shut his mouth and he's going to listen to the pleas of men and if those pleas don't have in it Lord you know that I was a sinner but I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and he is my advocate he is my propitiation before thee. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and than Jesus blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus, my advocate and propitiation. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is seeking sin. I don't believe I'm on my own righteousness. The righteousness I have is of Christ. Mm -hmm. So the Lord God is going to say, I'm going to give you eternal life. That's right. That's the boldness you got to have if you're going to get eternal life. And without that boldness, well, you know, the other side is going to be, well... <laughs> All right, I helped little ladies across the street. I uh, was, uh, you know, I didn't cheat on my taxes. Um, I um, uh, helped uh, uh, that uh, business to get on the, their feet there. I gave $14 million to the United Way. And uh, your righteousness is as filthy rags before a holy God. It's going to be a terrible day if you're depending upon your good works to uh, have the Lord God give you eternal life. This is what's at stake. In verse 17, which I want you to read one more time. In this union and fellowship with him, love is completed and perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him because as mm. he is so are we in this world mm. saints of God mm. saints of God <sighs> we don't wait until the day of Jesus' return to gain confidence your confidence is built every day that you hear the word, you hear the voice of the Lord, and you obey it. Well, well, what if I can't do it? He doesn't ask you to do anything you can't do. You just don't know you can. Do you, you see these people sitting here? You, you, you see us? Okay. We don't, we didn't wake up one day and say, let's do this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Golly, man. Uh, I, I, have a, I have a dear sister who used to listen to, we used to, we used to do teaching just, you know, in our living room with no cameras, just, just us. And a friend or two would come by or whatever. Sometimes we, sometimes we have several. But the concept of doing what we're doing right now, no. Mm -mm. Not gonna happen. I'm not smart enough. I don't have any degrees. I don't have any papers telling folk that I'm somebody. 
I'm just a I'm just a I'm just a woman, a wife, a mom, raise my children, help raise other people's children, and I don't have any skill set for this. But you have Holy Spirit and that's all you need. But but that that's the point I'm making. God didn't, the day I got saved, God didn't say, I want you to go on video. Well, at the time, we didn't even have this. <laughs> In 1977. 1977, there's no such thing. This as didn't this. even exist. There, there was no, there, <laughs> there was no, there was no internet. Okay. <laughs> In 1977. So he couldn't have woke me up and told me that. But what I was learning from 1977 onward is how to hear his voice and obey it. And it was in the simplest things. And you would think, well, that, does, that doesn't, that doesn't, you know, that's nothing. Anybody can do that. Now when you don't have a history of trust. I didn't trust people. Now you want me to trust an invisible something. And so God knew what he was working with. And so he taught me. He taught me step by step by step. Because the stuff we're teaching you, nobody, nobody taught us or taught me in particular. I, I, I basically just slogged through the Bible until he just started making sense. But God will do what he has to do to get you to a place where you need to be. My friends, Jesus gave the key to ministry effort in the earth he said but ye shall receive dunamis power, power right after that holy spirit shall come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem judea samaria the uttermost parts of the earth acts 1 8 so this would be the uttermost parts of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, what I'm saying is, of course, the boldness and confidence that comes through believing the love of God is the boldness and confidence that is required for ministry effort in general. It is Holy Spirit in action. And if you got Holy Spirit, my brother and sister, you are going to have confidence, boldness, and no fear here in the day of judgment. You're going to be able to stand before the Holy God who is a consuming fire. Yeah. <laughs> and not melt at his presence. The God that created all things is more than awesome. Yes. There are no words to describe the mass, the, the, the massiveness of his presence and glory. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says, the Lord Jesus Christ is the brightness of that glory and the express image of his person and by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of almighty God on thy throne O God the Lord Jesus Christ has received from ancients of days the complete and total authority of the God of the universe he is the one that is Holy Spirit in the believer. He is love. He is light. He is the one that gives confidence and boldness to the saints, not only to be ambassadors of Christ, but to stand before God in the day of judgment because this says down here, because as he is, so are we in this world. Read verse 18. There is no fear in love. 
Did you get that? We're talking about what is required to receive eternal life. No fear. There is no fear, fear. in love. Dread does not exist. But perfect, complete, full-grown love drives out fear mm -hmm. because fear involves the expectation of divine, divine punishment. punishment. Wait. This is some serious stuff. Those of, those of us who fear God. I think you need a different word. There's, there's the fear, the reverential fear of God, right? And then there's the fright. That fright means you, it, it, it involves an, a, the expectation of divine punishment. In other words, God is going to do something to you. Not if you're in him. Uh, we have been sharing uh, some very deep things on this broadcast today. Things that have eternal weight. And uh, I want to remind you of something the Apostle John wrote. And I'm going to read it. From the New King James uh, Version of the Scripture. And it's in the second chapter, 1 John. Don't turn from there. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. That's Holy Spirit. And you know all things. Why? You have Holy Spirit. He's the teacher of the church. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. Mm -hmm. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us. eternal life. If the saints that John wrote this letter to did not already have eternal life, he would have never written the letter. Mm -hmm. Because his goal was to let them know the difference between truth and error. The difference between Antichrist and Jesus Christ. The difference between believing the love of God versus having fear of the judgment. Mm -hmm. No one under the sound of my voice who is a beloved should have fear of the day of judgment. Right. Because Holy Spirit is love in the believer and has no fear here. And so I want you to read mm -hmm. verse 18. Okay. There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist. But perfect, complete, full-grown love drives out fear because fear involves the expectation of divine punishment. So the one who is afraid of God's judgment is not perfected in love, has not grown into a sufficient understanding of God's love. Yeah. So, anyone, you say, what did I say? The perfect love, 
So the one who is afraid of God's judgment, are you afraid of God's judgment? Judge yourself. If you're afraid of God's judgment, you are not perfected in love. You have not grown into a sufficient understanding of God's love. So here's your opportunity to grow up. Grow up in the love of God. Well, how do I do that? Keep reading his word. Listen for his ear. Listen with your spiritual ears. Do the things he has asked you to do. Do the things he's asked you to do. And then do the things he's asked you to do. But what if I can't do it? He wouldn't ask you to do it if you couldn't do it. Well, what if he asked me to pray every day? Then pray every day. Well, how long do I have to pray? See, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. You, 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 you're trying to make excuses. If you will pray every day, guess what? Guess what will happen to you? You will want to pray more every day. You will build an appetite for prayer. You will build an appetite for helping. You build an appetite for all of the things that are of God. You'll want to do it more. You're going to have to cut yourself off because you got to get dressed and go to work. You don't have an appetite for the things of God because you have not heard and done the simple things he's asked you to do. What was my, fr what was my prayer life when I first started? Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you give me power to live, and thank you, Lord. And bye. Yeah. Why? Because I didn't have an appetite for prayer. To me, prayer was just something that old ladies did. I don't know, I am an old lady. But prayer was just something that old ladies did. I didn't understand the necessity of prayer. I didn't know what prayer... I didn't know how it helped me when I if, when I prayed. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? We throw words at one another. We just throw words out there in the atmosphere with no explanation. You don't have an appetite for the things of God because you don't even know what they are. You don't even know that there's power in prayer. You don't know, you, you don't have an experience of People are being released in the spirit because of prayer. You have no idea of understanding how people come to hear the gospel and get born again because somebody somewhere is praying to break those bonds that's on their life so that they can hear the truth. We don't know. We don't know. But I'm telling you, that if you feel, if we just read this and you said, well, I, I, I have fear of torment, at, you know, at the end. Okay. Then you know you haven't grown up. So today is your day for growth. We're going to have our communion supper, our communion dinner, our Eucharist, as it were. Uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. So... Nah, so I got to open my Bible. Get your that. Bible. All right, I got a Bible here. We're gonna read this story. All right, this is uh, First Corinthians eleven, First Corinthians 11 23. twenty-three. Of course, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Yeah. Uh, as we just finished speaking about, you know, believing in the love of God, this is a demonstration of the love of God. This is God's demonstration of his love towards us. Okay? While we were yet sinners, people. While we were yet sinners. When Jesus did what he did, there had not been a Christian church built. There was no Christian church. There was Jewish there was the tabernacles and temples and whatever. Hebrew assembly, but there's no Christian. There was no Christian church. Okay. For I received from the Lord Himself that instruction. This is um our, our brother uh, Paul writing to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord Himself that instruction which I passed 
on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this represents my body my body Thank my you. body my body my body This represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. We talked about sacrifice, what it is to sacrifice, what do you sacrifice when there's something that you really, really, really want. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Well, if you want to be my lover, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What God really, really wanted was us. Yeah. That. He wanted fellowship with us again. He wanted access to us again. He wanted us to have access to him again. And what did it cost him? Everything. Everything. His son. While we were yet sinners, mm -hmm. Christ died for us. Did he do it? Did he do it? What he it did. Cost? <laughs> okay. <laughs> he did it. It cost him everything. It cost him everything. He laid aside everything that made him God to come in flesh and live on the earth as a man. As a man. A God man. To pay the price. Christ for Jesus. For all of creation. The beginning and the end. That is what it costs. And he paid the price. He said, this represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. I'm willing to give up myself, my place in the Godhead, to obey the will of my Father, to get you all back. To give you access with the Father and give the Father access to you. That's what I'm willing to do. Do this in affectionate remembrance of me. Partake. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the same way. Okay. And in the same way. After supper, he took the cup. Saying, this cup is the New Testament. Why do we need the New Testament? Because the Old Testament couldn't give us what God wanted us to have. All the Old Testament did, all the Old Covenant did, was keep God from wiping us out. And God wanted us to have more than that. He gave us a new covenant with better promises. Well, what's better than not being wiped out? Being one with God. That's, that's far better than just not being wiped out. Being one with God. Having the ability to abide in God and have him abide in us. One day we'll understand what that means. This is the cup, that new covenant that's ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in affectionate remembrance of me. Partake. Thank you. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes again. He's coming again. He's coming again. Jesus is coming again. He's coming again. He's coming again for every name that's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He's coming again for everyone that has surrendered and received of the goodness and love of God through his son Jesus Christ has placed Jesus as Lord and Savior in the tabernacle of their heart. See, these are, these are, the, these are the, the buildings not made with hands. This is what God wants to come and reside in, abide in. This is what he's looking for, a people. Mm -hmm. Not a building, a people. And he's coming back for you if you have surrendered and said, Lord, 
I will serve you. I will do your will. I will be your person. I'll be your body in the earth. That's who he's coming back for. He also gave us First John, First uh, um, Saint John, First John one nine. Yeah. That if you sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you. So on those occasions where you mess up, welcome to the club. God says, "Come to me. I forgive you. I cleanse you. I wash you. Now get up." And keep going. These are we are we are not those people that 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 just you know we just quit when we mess up. No, no, I I messed up. I was wrong. Go before God. Yeah, see that doesn't break the covenant. Repent, and, repent. and keep rolling. Yeah, doesn't break the covenant. Keep rolling. God knows what who and what He's dealing with, and He has made provisions for us to win. We got to stay humble before our God. Or what does that mean? That means agree with. True humility says, God, I agree with you. You, you, you thought it was something else. I'm sorry. Agree with God. He says, if you sin, bring it to me. I'll cleanse you. I'll wipe it. Now get up and keep going. Get up and keep going. Keep run. Endure to the end, people. Don't get halfway and say, oh, the heck with all this. No. Endure to the end. All right? Yeah. So listen. I could go on. I'm, I'm kind of full today. I'm kind of, yeah. But listen. Catch these teachings again and again and again and again and again. Catch them on Facebook and YouTube under Hastings Bible Fellowship. Listen to it. Take your Bible with you. Do it. Study this with your Bible. Don't just oh, read a rainbow. Don't just take my word for it. Read your Bible. Pray and read your Bible. When you're in these, when you're in these studies, when you go to your, your the place where you, your, the body of Christ gathers, take your Bible, read the scriptures, read the context of the scriptures. Okay, it's going to be it's vital for your growth. We're not just trying to learn some packs, you know. Oh, let me learn a few scriptures so I can have no. We're we are transforming. We're transforming our our, our our mental facilities so that we can be in agreement with God. We had a pastor one time, he said, you got stinking thinking. Well, we do. And you know why? Because we got it from the world we spent most of our life in. God is saying, I want to transform your conformer. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. If I can change the way I'm thinking, I can change everything. If I can get in agreement with God, I can change everything. Everything. As a man thinks, so is he. What are you thinking? Do you think about your thinking? You need to think about your thinking. What are you thinking? Of? I asked him all the time, what you thinking about? He was like, uh, men, men are weird, man. They are so, they are so complex. They, they swear they are not, but they are so complex. I'm like, what are you thinking? And then I just sit and wait, and it makes him kind of nervous because he's like, she's not going away. No, I'm not going away. I have a son just like him. Pray for me. And so I would go in my son's room, go in my son's room, and he's in the, you know, he's been, he's been in there too long. And I'm like, what's going on? I said, what you thinking? And he just sits there, his eyes go. And I just sit there 
and I've sat there 30 minutes in silence and finally he's like she's just not going to relent and then he starts telling me stuff and I listen and I listen and I listen and, I say, and then I ask him what do you want to do with that like a good mom I didn't say well I'll fix it no what do you want to do with that we got more talking to do and guess what happens he comes up with a solution okay but he had to think about it we haven't taught ourselves to think you're not learning it in school we need to think about what we are thinking and then we can pray and say god i need your mind on this situation because what i'm thinking is crazy and then you can grow that's that's extra but anyway catch these teachers on hastings bible fellowship hastings bible fellowship youtube facebook we also have our snippets that you can catch on uh instagram under hastings bible hastings bible uh, little shorts that we do and we put them out on instagram and on facebook and youtube as well okay but on instagram is hastings bible on the other ones it's hastings bible fellowship okay so listen i know we have run long 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 but we do these things because god is he's pushing He's pushing us into a place where sometimes it's just not comfortable to be. But you know what? Hearing and obeying is what I do. Hearing and obeying is what I do. And he will be glorified. And you, my brother and sister, and soon to be brother and sister, will benefit from our obedience. So I'm looking at the joy and not at the pain. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Until next time.